I'm Steve Collins, and I want to talk to you a little bit more about the verb. And I want to look at the verb, again, as I did earlier with a um, letter from a Birmingham jail, I want to look at the verb in American civil rights rhetoric. In particular, I want to look at it in the rhetoric of Frederick Douglass, who in 1852 delivered a speech um, known as what is, the, what is the Fourth of July to a Slave, in which he condemned people for celebrating independence even though there were slaves who were definitely um, far from independent. And in this speech, he engages in what is known as copia. That word looks a little bit weird, but it looks an awful lot like this word too. Copious or copiousness, meaning a lot, abundant, plenty. And what it means is that in using copia, he gave multiple examples. Just as letter from a Birmingham jail had many examples in one sentence, so Frederick Douglass, um, a century earlier, gave multiple examples. Whereas Martin Luther King saved his main verb to the very end of the sentence, what you see going on in Douglass is that Douglass puts a different verb with every single clause. And it adds a tremendous amount of color and passion to what is said. So as we read this sentence, from what is the 4th of July to an American slave, we're going to look at the actual verbs as they're highlighted in the slide here. What, am I to argue that it is wrong to make men brutes, to rob them of their liberty, to work them without wages, to keep them ignorant of their relations to their fellow men, to beat them with sticks, to flay their flesh with a lash, to load their limbs with irons, to hunt them with dogs, to sell them at auction, to sunder their families, to knock out their teeth, to burn their flesh, to starve them into obedience and submission to their masters? Must I argue that a system thus marked with blood and stained with pollution is wrong? No, I will not. I have better employment for my time and strength than such arguments would imply. That main sentence has, I believe, 13 different verbs. Let's count them. One, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Thirteen different verbs in an infinitive form. But the fact that every single clause has a different verb gives power and color and constantly keeps you on edge. Just as you think you sort of know what the verb is going to be, he throws in another one. And people want to wait and hear what is going to be said. This form of using a different verb with every clause actually has a very odd name, but in case you're curious, it's known as hypozuxis. Every clause has its own verb. This is part of the power that Frederick Douglass brought to civil rights rhetoric in 1852. I want to give you another example, though. It still has copia, but it doesn't have hypozuxis. So let me show you another example now. And this example is probably the most famous and the most quoted from the 1852 speech. But what I want you to notice is he gets rid of a verb. Actually gets rid of a verb. And the verb he gets rid of is actually going to be a really tiny dinky one. It's going to be this little is right here. And it's going to be, it's going to be also this are right here. It's a small verb. But watch what happens when you get rid of it. And I'm going to show you this again with a little bit of highlighting in it. And let's read what happens. What to the American slave is your 4th of July? I answer a day that reveals to him more than all other days in the year the gross injustice and cruelty to which he is the constant victim. To him, your celebration is a sham. Your boasted liberty, an unholy license. Your national greatness, swelling vanity. And then, because he's very concerned about being grammatically correct, he switches to a plural verb and then drops that out. Your sounds of rejoicing are empty and heartless. Your denunciation of tyrants, brass-fronted impudence. Your shouts of liberty and equality, hollow mockery. Your prayers and hymns, your sermons and thanksgivings with all your religious parade and solemnity are to him mere bombast, fraud, deception, impiety, and hypocrisy, a thin veil to cover up crimes which would disgrace a nation of savages. There is not a nation of, on earth guilty of practices more shocking and bloody than are the people of the United States at this very hour. 
But this one portion of the sentence is powerful. He gets rid of the verb. Your celebration is a sham. Your boasted liberty, we expect an is here, but we don't have one. An unholy license, your national greatness, swelling vanity. Your sounds of rejoicing are empty and heartless. Now he expects the are again. Your denunciation of tyrants are brass fronted impudence, but he gets rid of it. And by getting rid of a verb, it's like he's gotten rid of the shock absorber between different railroad cars. And you're bang, 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 banging the words into each other. It adds a sort of shock value to have no word acting as a buffer between these. And that gives it a lot of power. This form of omission of a verb in multiple clauses has the very unusual name zugma. Use that at parties. It'll impress your friends until they stop inviting you to parties. This is a powerful way to simply just manipulate verbs. Two paragraphs earlier, we saw the hypozuxis, where suddenly every clause had its own verb. And now suddenly he comes along and pulls the verb out just to make it a little more impactful on you. That's the power of verb. I find it in the civil rights movement in particular in Douglas, and I find it in Martin Luther King, because they were often faced with not telling a white person how to think, but allowing them to come to the conclusion on their own. And the best way they did that was to present example after example after example after example, the copia, and let the white person come to the conclusion themselves, not being told by a black person, but coming to it all on their own. And that's the reason this copia and this repetition becomes so important in civil rights rhetoric. And again, it comes down to the power of a verb, just a verb and how it is manipulated.